What's up, OBB fam? It is Toast. And when it came to their tagline, the Ed Morse Automotive Group could have said anything, but they went with Backed by Morse. They want their customers to know that when they buy from Ed Morse, they are backed by Ed Morse. And right now, during the Get Backed event, every vehicle is on sale and backed by Morse. New vehicles are backed by Morse with price protection promises. All used vehicles are on sale and backed by Morse with thorough inspections and warranties. Even your service is backed by Morse with a price match guarantee. Shop hundreds of new, used, and certified pre-owned vehicles, all the best makes and models, all on sale, and all backed by Morse. Ed Morse even has your back with low finance rates on all your favorite vehicles, and you already know their lower finance rates mean lower monthly car payments. So make this the year you get backed by Morse. Shop an amazing selection of vehicles with unbeatable deals all backed by Morse. Find a location nearest you and go to edmorse.com today. But remember, you're only backed by Morse when you buy from Morse. The OBBs are very proud to welcome LifeWallet to our family in 2022. This revolutionary technology is changing the game in the medical field. The LifeWallet app locates and structures your medical records in one secure location so you can access them easily and efficiently. Currently, your medical records are inconveniently stored by healthcare providers across multiple platforms. The hurdle we as consumers face with the current structure is that these systems do not interconnect. The solution? LifeWallet facilitates the interconnectivity of your entire medical history from birth to present day. Download the app today at either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. LifeWallet. The time is now. One thing the OBB fam adores is a quality beer. No one better to get it from than South Florida's own The Tank Brewing. Located at 5100 Northwest 72nd Avenue in Miami, they've got 25,000 square feet of liquid innovation happening. 16 taps in a great kitchen. If you can't get down to the brewery for a pint or a tour, you can find their product on the shelves of your local Publix or Total Wine. So go grab a six-pack of Loca or La Playita or Frank the Tank and pop one open as you listen to an episode of the Orange Bowl Boys. The Tank Brewing, the official bar of the OBB. Coming to you from the middle of Canes country, you're listening to the number one rated football podcast in the Dominican Republic. Oh, la. These are the Orange Bowl Boys. Brought to you by Ed Morse. Join the 1.75 million people that have been backed by Morse. With the price protection promise, Ed Morse will match any competitor's price or refund you up to $7,500. Here's Toast, Roman, and Scoop. Well, our, our next guest really doesn't need any introduction, but we kind of have to do one. Yeah, we um, got to tell everybody who he is. a South Florida legend, a cane through and through. Ladies and gentlemen, it is super agent Drew Rosenhaus. Good to see you guys. My, my first time on your show. Yes. Welcome. Absolutely. We're very glad to have Great you. Great to be here. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. This is a nice event. Really. really uh, I mean, look at this. I'm glad the sun went down because it was hotter than hell. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm blown away by the growth that we've seen in Miami. You know, uh, F1 and uh, this this type of uh, event is it's really wild. Just seeing all the people that have come here recently and just the popularity of Miami is incredible. So, Drew, let's uh, let's talk about the big thing that's going on now, and uh, it's NIL. Yep. And for the first time, you as an agent can now be involved with college players and not sure. be breaking any sort of a rule. It's like the Wild West out there. Um, is Miami doing it better than other people? Uh, Miami, yes, they are. Um, you know, from my standpoint, we don't have a lot of interaction with the colleges. Um, the colleges still try to regulate it, mm-hmm. but we don't do a lot of uh, coordinated things. So it's hard for me to comment directly about how the University of Miami compares with USC or one of the other programs. But Miami has John Ruiz, who has been a game changer for NIL. And, uh, you know, Ruiz is doing it the right way. I was just talking to John, and I, I thanked him for not only the contributions financially to the players, but, but the, uh, the ability 
to help these guys with uh, extracurricular things, working with them on uh, their life skills and learning about life after football because not every guy in NIL is going to play in the NFL. And even the guys that are in the NFL won't play forever. So what I, what I like about what John is doing is it's not just writing a big check to these young men. It's helping them with a number of uh, educational um, and entrepreneurial things. So Miami's got a big edge in that capacity. And, uh, you know, the NIL has become a, a fabric of uh, college football. Um, you know, from an agent standpoint, we're very active in trying to get uh, deals for our clients. But now the colleges are getting very involved directly with their collectives, which is another word for alumni. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, very prevalent in recruiting right now and also the transfer portal. So what we're dealing with now, and I think it's a great thing um, because I, I believe these young men have always deserved to get compensated. Uh, you know, the NCAA, the colleges make so much money. Why shouldn't they, you mm -hmm. know, get a piece of the pie? Correct. They're the ones that are out there, you know, on the field, blood, sweat, and tears. So I'm happy for them. But it's a whole different landscape. It's absolutely professional football. And every top recruit now, um, you know, theoretically is going to be shopping to the highest bidder. Uh, guys that decide to transfer, like uh, Jordan Addison, who got in the transfer portal from Pittsburgh is presumably in a bidding war right now. We saw Caleb Williams, uh, the quarterback who left Oklahoma and followed Lincoln Riley to USC, and there was uh, vigorous competition to get him. So it, it is reminiscent of uh, NFL free agency where you go to the highest bidder. I think it's great. It's incredible. It is incredible. But it's that we're very different than yeah. what we're accustomed to. One of the things that's unique to me, though, I mean, NFL, I mean, you have a fair market value. I think you would know better than anyone, you know, what the fair market value is for a player, what you can get. Right now, there is no fair market value. It's not been set yet. Is there some kind of regulatory stance that somebody needs to set here for these college kids? Or You know, in the NFL, I've been an agent for 34 years, and it's easy for me to identify what our client's value is because there's a precedent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's statistics, there's a record uh, over 50 years of contracts and whatnot. We don't have that yet, as you alluded to in the NIL, but that'll change. There, there will be somebody that will capitalize on making money from compiling the information and what players are getting, at least what's documented. Uh, and they have to document it because you got to play tax. You got to right, pay taxes on it. Yeah. So I do think it's inevitable that we have a, uh, a public way or professional way to identify what the players are getting in NIL and then use that as a basis for judging what what players should get. It's a natural evolution, and you ask a brilliant question because um, right now it's a free for all. Like. I saw what uh, the basketball player got mm -hmm. to transfer from Kansas, Kansas State, 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 State to right. come to Miami. And I'm wondering, you know, why, why would he get more than a Heisman Trophy candidate like Tyler? I, and, and I'm not throwing shade that way, but that seems odd to me. Right. So I think we do have to find some standard of market value so it can be equitable and it's not all over the place. Like, Jordan Addison's a fantastic player, right? He's a Bolitnikoff winning wide receiver. But if you believe the reports that he might get a million More dollars than to Kenny transfer. More Pickett. <laughs> they're, talk, they're talking yeah, that, three million dollars. Get I, out I, of here. I, I, I don't believe it. And a house. Second. Yeah, yeah, right. I, yeah. I, I just, I don't know that the model of college football can make it in that capacity. Um you know, these alumni have a lot of money and whatnot, and there are a lot of great sponsorships. That just seems like a, a model that's not sustainable. sustainable right. So I, I think we'll come up with a more level-headed approach at some point down the road. I think it kind of likens to, and, and I'm on the outside looking in, but, you know, when they kind of regulated 
um, you know, the top, basically the, the first round, right? And the, the, the max that the top pick in the NFL draft could get because it was getting out the of Sam control, Bradford right? Sam Bradford yeah, was right. the last guy, yeah. right? He was the last one before they regulated it. And it's kind of like you're seeing that. They just, you just can't stop it. And now you see everybody going to Congress and they're trying to, like, they realize, oh, my God, the genie's out of the Like, what are we going to do? Because it's a free-for-all. I think eventually... Right, like you said, eventually it'll calm down and you'll be able to at least put some regulations in place to where maybe there is a max. Maybe there is a level or a barometer that you have to stay at uh, to be able to keep it moving forward without it being just a complete disaster. What, what, I'd be uncom- what I'm uncomfortable with is I'm all for young men and women making as much money as they can. But it, it will upset the structure of college football if there continues to be rampant transferring it will upset a lot of the developmental growth of many of these players and the teams and i don't know that that is good for the young the young athletes so i'm not sure that i have a problem with um, getting guys there but i don't know how i feel about players coming and going even in the NFL, you got to play four years before right. you can become a free agent. And that allows players to develop continuity, to grow, to learn, to be with similar coaches. Um, I'm concerned about that element for college football. In your opinion, does it make a difference to do NFL uh, brass look at the players who transfer or maybe transfer more than once? Does it look poorly upon them, in your opinion, it's because it's, it's a bit of a lack of commitment? I think they will study it as a factor, like Jalen Phillips was a young man who transferred from the University of Miami, from UCLA to Miami. But when he met with the teams, the teams felt he was a high-character guy, and he's an outstanding young man. But when you transfer, it uh, raises at least something that – the teams will look into, uh, but not in of itself be a red flag. You can overcome it if you're a solid citizen. Now, if you transfer multiple times, that is something that could become controversial. A team might worry about that. What is Rosenhaus's sports relationship with college athletes? You're not an actual like full-on agent, right, like you are for their NFL. So how is the relationship different between a college player like Tyler Van Dyke and your NFL clients? So with the NIL, we are um, purely there for endorsement and marketing. Okay. Um, in the NFL, obviously, you represent them for the life of the contract that you negotiate as long as they don't terminate you. Right. Um, And you are representing them in contract negotiations as well as often the marketing, the endorsements. So the big piece that's missing here is, you know, really, for example, my expertise. Mm -hmm. Um, I spend all my time as an agent for NFL players on the negotiating side. We have our own marketing team, people that are dedicated to marketing, endorsements, public relations, life after football, media relations. Um, The NIL, I'm not involved in as directly as I am with the NFL guys because I'm not really doing my expertise. But it does give me a chance to talk to them about the NFL and the future, things like training, nutrition, dealing with injuries, they can um, see how your company works and operates. Yeah, firsthand. without a doubt. Yeah. Sure, you develop Get a relationship. So I, 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 I certainly had a long history of being an agent before an IL, but I welcomed it because I thought it was great for the players. Um, it's a different environment for us now because ordinarily we would start recruiting a player as a junior if they're a top prospect or more than likely a senior. Now we're recruiting guys that are incoming freshmen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We have NIL guys that are haven't played college football yet. So it's a much different model. But in many respects, I enjoy it because we get to develop relationships earlier. But it is an amazing commitment that you have to make as an agent because now you're working 
for young men at a much earlier date than you did before. And uh, that's a big change. I just kind of want to circle back, and, and I just listened to you how you express yourself in terms of the, the transfer. You wish that they would limit it. And I agree with you because you, you, take, you take the wide receiver from Pitt. I actually feel bad for Pitt. I really do because this is a guy, it almost relegates Pitt to a minor league team. And this was a guy that was supposed to finish his career there. Maybe he, he finds a little loophole in the transfer portal. Now it's going to be like these smaller market guys who don't have the NIL opportunities losing the continuity with the team, like you said, because they can't fix the transfer portal. It, and I almost think it takes a little bit of the teeth out of the NIL deal if you can curtail that because you don't have the free agency market if they're not in the free agency. Yeah, one of the things I'm concerned about is, for example, the quarterback from USC transferred to Pittsburgh, Keaton Slovis. And I'm sure a big part of that was playing with Jordan Addison. Now, Addison's gone. So how does that impact college football on a year-to-year basis? You're a coach, and you're not sure which guys are going to be here, who's not, continuity, working with other players. Um, You know, Addison is a top prospect, and uh, I guess if Pickett were still there, it might be an advantage to stay with the quarterback that you've got timing with. But... uh, He went through the spring with Slovis, and uh, now he's got to find a new quarterback. So, yeah, I do think that it can be a bit upsetting for college football, but I I don't begrudge the players for taking advantage of their opportunities, but it could come back to haunt them in other ways than I'm alluding to in terms of continuity and consistency, development and coaching. Yeah, the layers certainly just kind of, it's like a lack of depth, right? So the layers just kind of continue to crumble upon themselves, like when Slovis goes and then and then uh, Addison leaves. But the, the, the burden now, and you mentioned it, really falls on the coaching staff. And now the fact that they don't have to only recruit the kids that are coming in, but as you mentioned, you're, recruiting, so your roster mentioned, every you're day. recruiting your roster. You have to recruit everybody every day. And that's exhausting. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> like, you need to hire a guy just, just, to, take, right? just right? to take that on. I mean, that what? Responsibility. Yeah. It's hard enough. It, it is a tough job, man, to be a college coach. In the old, just three years ago, you all you had to do was the old days recruit yeah. Yeah. and coach. Yeah. yeah. Now you have to know NIL, what your alumni are doing, what your collective is doing. How does that compare to other business deals, marketing deals, endorsement deals? Uh, you almost have to form a, an alliance with agents that can bring deals to your guys. Um, And you have to wonder about the portal at all times. If you kick a guy in the butt, you know, figuratively, not physically, you chew him out for missing an assignment. Are you worried that guy's going to transfer? So I think coaching is a very different uh, animal. And that's probably why you're seeing a massive uptick in what these college coaches are getting salary-wise because the job is incredibly more challenging now than it was just a few years ago. And even in terms of the lengths of the contract, right? I mean, there's a lot of 10-year yeah, deals, deals out there now. last year, I mean, which is terribly I, uncommon. I think it is much harder now to be a top successful college head coach than it is in the NFL. I used to say being an NFL head coach, you had a lot of variables. You had to know about the salary cap and what, was gonna, what you wanted out of free agency, the draft, you had to coach guys and manage them and organize your coaching staff. But now I think college coaching is even more intricate with the NIL and the transfer stuff. Because at least when you're under contract in the NFL, if you want to leave, they have your rights for four years. Or a team can say, hey, you got to stay. We don't have to trade yeah. you. In college, they can leave. Mm-hmm. So you're a college coach. You kind of lose a lot of your authority. What's the possibility? Because remember, you know, the kids used to leave. They'd have to sit out a year, but you could block them from certain schools. Remember that? I just thought about that. Yeah. That what's, was conference initiated, though. Y- y- right. But what? so what's, I mean, is there a harm in putting that back into play to where, you know, at least you can limit where they potentially could go? Something's going to happen in, in some capacity. I don't think we're going to be able to limit 
player's ability to transfer, but they may try and restrict it to something similar to what it was. Okay. Listen, man, thank you very Absolutely. much. You've been incredibly generous with sure. your time. Sure. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Uh, keep uh, hanging out with Tyler over there. And, yep. uh, yeah, thank you for everything you're doing, man. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Appreciate thank you, Thank you, Drew. Sure. Bro, this fucking episode. <laughs> Holy Jesus. This episode's awesome. <laughs> I still haven't gotten to eat my chicken quesadilla. No, they've been sitting there for an hour. I ordered two hours ago. My and, stomach and, is eating itself. And I'm going to go ahead and, and blow it open now because uh, so earlier we were talking about we we haven't yet seen the big interview that we thought we might be having. And it doesn't mean it's not going to happen yet, but we're waiting. Possibly. We were told that two-time national champion head coach Jay Wright is going to be here from Villanova, who just retired. Is, really? Is here this evening. Wow. And, uh, you know where he is? We were asked if we would have him on, and I told them we absolutely will. So whenever, at some point, I'm hoping he's going to come on over here. Um, but yeah, Jay Wright, former That'd be Villanova. Pretty dope. Dude, was just in the Final Four. Somebody needs to go grab him. Yes. He has will to go. He's got one arm. <laughs> 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 All right, want to take a quick break? Yes, yeah. Take a break. All right, so we are back. Roman is going to sit this out for just a little bit. Don't go anywhere now. Oh, yeah, why is he sitting this out? Well, we have a couple of special guests. Oh, do, do we? We do. A couple special guests. They'll jump on just for a little bit. We had a little news among the Miami Women's Basketball Program. We did. About a week ago. Yeah. Uh, some of you may have seen this news, but we have some new players that are coming to town. And they've got a bit of a reputation about themselves. Uh, like six million some odd people follow them around. Is it that many? It's, I believe the last I heard it was six million. Yeah. Really? So like combine everything together. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, making their Orange Bowl Boys podcast debut. Haley and Hannah Cavender. Hey. Welcome, ladies. What's up? Thanks, Thanks for guys. having us. Yeah, thank yes. you guys so much for having us. Thank We're you for to coming be on. Thank you for coming on. For thank sure. you for asking us. All right, so we actually had the, uh, we, got, we, got, we got to meet at the private thing last night real right. quick and we talked to you guys. And I kind of want to start here because when you guys came down here and made the decision, instantly everyone was saying, oh, well, this is another Miami NIL that came for the money, this and that. And I'm sure money probably had uh, played some sort of part of it, but what you were telling us last night is that you guys have never been to the dance. Right. And you guys want to win. Yeah. You want to go to a Final Four. And that was the driving decision you were telling us last night of why you can't. NIL, that, fine, that might happen. But you came here because you want to win. Exactly. I think Coach Katie sold us right when we got here. Her vision for the team, um, Haley and I felt just so welcomed by Miami in the first place. And the girls and the culture that they have built. Um, they obviously made a really good run in the ACC tournament last year. Um, and that's just something we want to build and we want to get to the tournament. Like you said, we came here to win and I think um, Miami has all the resources to do it. So under Coach Katie Meyer and her team that she has, we're just super excited. We can't get, wait to get to work. Yeah, I think what Hannah said, just going off of that, um, taking our official visit um, to other schools and just being able to, you know, see what University of Miami encompasses and just Coach Katie Meyer and her team and what she's built here is something Hannah and I want to be a part of. So we're just super excited to get down here and get to work. Now, you, you've seen Katie's stats, right? College yeah. stats, right? She's still better than everybody on the team? Yeah. yeah. Coach she Katie is special. Is she's special. She's special. Yeah. It's ridiculous, right? It is. It is absolutely Those numbers ridiculous. are stupid. Especially, like, even when Coach Kid talks to us, I'm just, like, blown away. I'm like, wow, this is going to be my coach. <laughs> like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to play under this woman. So I'm just, we're just so excited. When we you guys wait. hit the portal, was she the first one to call you? Um, yes. Actually, they were one of the first to reach out. So that always stuck with us, too, and just kept that. We just kept that in mind throughout this whole process. Um, the transfer portal is definitely competitive. But, um, yeah, they were one of the first to reach out. So we always kept that in mind as well. We, we, we got to talk to your uh, dad a little bit last night as well. Right. And he was telling some funny stories. I guess Katie made such a big impact on you guys that after you left and went to another school, you guys were still talking about yeah. Katie and while uh, you were at that other school. And your dad's like, they made the cardinal sin. They said, well, we're in a rebuild right now. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, it. They, they, they're not interested yeah. in a rebuild at this stage. Yeah, exactly. Th exactly. I think, like, that's what Coach Katie and her leadership and just her competitiveness. Um, as a leader and as a coach, I think him and I just discuss that all the time. Like, why wouldn't we want to play for her and her team and everything that they bring to the table? So we're just super excited um, to get here and get to work with the girls and do what we can to help them win. 
being twins, aside from just being sisters, right? You know, yeah. you have the sibling rivalry with yeah. everything you guys are doing. Is it even more intense? Because there's there's no age gap, there's no age difference. This is, you know, I'm better than you this day, I'm better than you this day. Who's who's better? In your mind, <laughs> right? Because I want both of you to say I am. Because yeah. obviously that's that would be the I goal. I think um I think we have our different strengths and weaknesses. Honestly, I think any given day, going one-on-one versus each other has helped us grow so much as players. Um, but I think just competing versus each other, and obviously we've done that our whole life growing up. So, I mean, I think just being competitive with each other, holding each other accountable is what got us here, and that's what we're going to continue to do and hopefully bring to Miami. So hold on. And whoever wants to start, can either Hannah or Haley. Uh, at one point in time, you guys have been going one-on-one your entire lives, basketball hoop in the backyard, I'm sure. Each of you, what was your best moment against your sister in a one-on-one? Uh, what, like the shot or the defensive dang. block or something? You put us on the spot. Well, um, I, there, that's what we're here for. Of games. I remember just growing up and we'd watch NBA Finals and then during halftime, like Christmas, or it would be like, not Christmas, yeah. but... Obviously, when we're watching the finals and stuff, we'd always go do like a series best of seven. Like, Hannah and I'd be like, we're okay, like, we half time we're going there. out, we're playing, we're gonna try to. It was just competitive. I think that's what pushed us, and uh, we always hold each other accountable. Um, we're very competitive within another, just in life. Um, so, I just think that helps us become the best basketball players and people. I think um, also following on that, like, Haley and I would always play to do who has to do dishes or who has yeah. to do laundry. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, see, that's the other end. Yeah. All right, who you know, did the dishes more? Exactly. Who lost more? Did dishes. I think I do. I think I do the dishes more. Really? Exactly. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, who's driving here this time? Then we were like, okay, you're gonna drive to the airport to pick somebody up, or you guys gotta go drive to the grocery store. Was it just a game of horse, or was it just flat out? No, it was was pickup for sure. So your dad, your dad played college hoops too, right? Yeah. So did he in one on one? See, I know how I am with my daughters. I don't let them win. Okay. So, and people get mad at me for that, but I'm sorry. They don't get to win until they can beat me. <laughs> so, Which will well, happen one day. One day they certainly, look, Kenzie will beat me here probably in the next couple of years on the course. So the reality is, that, you know, it, that's the, I kind of think that breeds the competition. Yeah. Did he ever let you guys win in one-on-one, or was it always get yeah. that out of here? No, my dad is definitely the hardest on us, but I think that's what has made us so mentally strong. Um, I couldn't ask for a better support system, but he's definitely one of the hardest people on us, and I actually really appreciate that because I think that's what Haley and I need. Um, but yeah, definitely when we were growing up, we played a lot of horse with him because he's he does have a bad knee, so we couldn't <laughs> play well. I remember playing speed with him in um, our in our driveway. He he went down, and my mom was like, "Okay, we might need to take him to the hospital. Like he's getting too competitive." But no, my dad definitely uh, has pushed Haley and I, and that that's helped us along the way for sure. That is awesome. That Very is awesome. good. Yeah, good stuff. Um, do you guys remember? And all right, so I have like um, what well, we got like twelve thousand followers on our. Twitter account. I got like 4,500. You guys are in the millions. Do you remember the first post where like you guys were like, dude, we just picked up like 100,000 followers. Like, was there a, an initial post that just took off that you guys got you guys started? Um, honestly, I can't remember like an initial post. I think during quarantine when we were bored, Hannah was really on the TikTok and she just kept saying like, Haley, get into it. Like, and I, it was her own separate account. Okay. Um, so then we just started doing it for fun. Um, and I guess people just love twins. I guess. Twins that play basketball. Who doesn't, who, who doesn't love twins? I know. Well, I, guess I love so. twins. I mean, it so, worked out. I mean, for one's us, so. easy. But, you know, right. Two. Yeah. Better. It and the issue with out. TikTok is that I'll all of a sudden start scrolling, and all of a sudden, holy shit, it's been three hours. <laughs> what, what's TikTok the, lo- is like what's the, the longest you've caught yourself like, oh my god, I got to put this down for a second? I've been scrolling this for five hours. Um, honestly, I think I try to stay off of it as much as possible. Okay. I know that's hard. I mean, in the beginning, obviously, when you're bored and quarantine's happening, you're you're scrolling and you find yourself on mm-hmm. there for hours. But now I think time management's very important. So okay. I'll try to just like scroll on it, set it for thirty minutes. <laughs> Put my phone down. Like, try not to worry about it. Honestly, that's where I think I'm at. Your dad can put, like, a, you know, I put a, a time limit oh, yeah. for the girls, I, I, right? I, I, that's, I, I that'd think, be perfect. I think once you're over 18, you don't, you don't, you don't, do have, you don't have to do kids. that? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so, yeah. Well, I mean, I, 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 the 20s. I'm going to have, I'm gonna have to learn these rules. I'm not really sure what's going on. I think they're allowed to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Just at the age limit. So, yeah, they definitely, they, nice. they, they, they've limited the phone restrictions for sure. Do you guys have a, a, a tandem account 
as well or just individual accounts? On TikTok or just on TikTok? Uh, I don't know, any of them. Um, on TikTok, we just have one account together. And then Instagram, we have a conjoined account and then two separate accounts. So. Yeah, see? Okay. Yeah, maybe it's All six right. minutes. Every- All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, we are so super excited. We think the uh, women's basketball team might actually outdraw the men's basketball yes. team this year because of you two. I believe so. Distinct possibility. Just saying. Just they saying. had a great run last no, year. Maybe both not. Maybe both not. Of them, I know. No, both Destiny of them. Destiny hit like 17 straight. I got so you. we're excited. I got you. We're excited. We are super excited for you guys to be in town. Thank you guys so much for picking the University of Miami. And we cannot wait to watch you guys all season long. We're, we're excited. So excited. Go Canes. Go, Go Canes. Canes. Thanks and, for having and us. Before you guys make the tournament next year, you got to come out with us before the tournament. Okay. Deal. Okay. Or maybe right after you. Hannah's like, I don't know. After the final four. four. She after the final four. Like, yeah. After the final four. Absolutely. Okay. We've got to celebrate right. after we win it all. They're all business, man. I know. You know. I know. You know. <laughs> That's what gets you there. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, yeah, for thank you guys us. for having us. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Uh, the evening is progressing here uh, down at One Herald Plaza, and uh, right now we are joined by two current Miami Hurricanes. Roomies. Roomies, exactly. BFFs, if you will. It's uh, Tyler Van Dyke and Xavier Restrepo. What is up, boys? How we doing? What's up? What's up? What's OBB on? brand ambassadors coming back Sorry. for the 2022 season, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Scoop will yell at me if I said it too early. No, no, no. Back <laughs> we're back. We're back. So, so over to X first, because... Now we've had Avante on, and we just had Gil on earlier. We're like, who's the hardest guy for you to cover? They both said you. Yeah? Yeah. He, they did. They did. Now, now, he, now Gil is, is a little bit more consummate of the teammate. He's like, oh, Brashard, too. i got to give him a little. He, you know, he's hard to go because I go up against slot guys. But you, bar none, were, were, were number one. He then said if, like, I was like, well, X is going. He goes, don't worry. He'll come back close to TVD soon enough. I'm like, well, he's smart. <laughs> <laughs> he's smart. Yeah. That's the guy throwing him the ball. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Roe wasn't able to make it out to the spring game. My scooper, uh, myself and Scooper out there. Um, how did you guys come out of that feeling about the uh, the new offense with Gaddis and how you guys performed? What were your thoughts? Yeah, we felt good about it. You know, we were just trying to work on that run game. Mm-hmm. We struggled with that last year. Um, so we are working on that. I mean, it, w- it went really well. I mean, Henry. The walk-on. Bad, yeah. D- Devon, yeah. Yeah. They, they all produce and... Um, that will only open up the passing game even more. So I'm, I'm just excited about that. The line did a great job pass protecting, run blocking, so it's good. Mm-hmm. Max? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, just to be out there and just to go through the whole entire, like, like the whole playbook, really. Um, we're just trying to get our basics down right because obviously without the basics, we can't really do nothing. So just to get the basics down packed and just trying to perfect the basics is really, like, the biggest thing for us all week. So we had Will on earlier, and I know he didn't partake because he's uh, coming off an injury, so he's going to get healed. But I was like, hey, man, talk to me about that little delayed tight end, you know, screen in the middle slash check down thing. I saw him run it a lot, too. And I'm like, that thing was there all day. And I was like, yeah. man, that's got to be so hard for defense to cover. I mean, I know it's a tight end. I'm sorry, X. I know I got to get Will's very excited love. about this play. He's very excited about the He's potential. excited about yeah. the yeah. tight ends yes. in general. Yes. If we're having a third down along, second down along, you already know that's coming. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, yeah like, like the route that he has me doing is like the big over so I'm taking like all those linebackers back and then just when all the all of them go back it's just an easy dump off. Yeah once they see the tight end start blocking a little bit mm-hmm. even if it's man yeah. the linebacker's eyes will go somewhere else and this will just sneak out. Yeah and this is my this is the fun part too. So in the spring game I did have a chance to go back and watch it so I think you're like two by one. You're one to the boundary side it was Lassen. Lassen goes on like a clear route. He's, he's kind of running an eight but it's not necessarily an eight route. But then you're talking about that over route, and it's that over and up, man. That's one on one. I'm like, that's going to be dirty, especially against man. Oh, for or, sure. Or cover three, because that corner is going to press inside, take the eight route with Latson, and, and we missed it. We missed it on that route. Ivy actually had some pretty good coverage on that play. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, ooh, there's some vertical passing games. Are you excited about stuff like that? Yeah, yeah we have a lot of play action, uh, vertical passing games. So, I mean, I'm really excited uh, just for that, you know? I mean,. And what was like, what's natural about that is the the play action stuff. Like your running back is like now in a prime position to block. Yeah. So it like puts you in a max look without really being a max look, right? Because he's just right there and he's blocking. I thought the blitz pickups looked good too. I thought the offensive line blocked it well. You guys, I mean, that's going to sure. help a lot. How how do you feel actually about the offensive line? How they I mean, ticked up? I feel like I have all day to run routes out there. Like like especially in spring, the, I tell the guys every single drive like they're doing a great job. Just like. 
given me time, honestly, to do what I have to do and let T um, deliver the ball. So I appreciate those guys. Those guys are getting really, really good better. That's phenomenal, man. That's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm watching the running game, too, and I, it's, it's tough because I want to applaud the running game because it's coming out of there because people are like, you know, hey, what? I like, man, the run game's going to tick up so much now. I just, I, I just felt like the guys were more balanced. They were more aggressive. Uh, they, were, they were, like, pounding it. One of the things, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know, the, like, the quick bubble, I don't know if this is going to be a staple in this offense, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be more apt to come at you, maybe play action, do the tight end pass we were talking about, to try to pound on people. Would you agree, disagree? We, I mean, we have, we have bubbles. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, not like, like last year. Every run we had last year had a bubble attached. A bubble attached, right? I mean, now we have to, the call attaches, we have to call it to attach it to the run. Mm-hmm. So it's not every run, it's automatically the bubble. But we do have it, we didn't, I don't think we threw any well, we yeah. haven't ran any, but yeah. we have it, and we'll probably run some of it. But yeah, and I agree with you. And I also feel like it it has a lot to do with like game planning, like versus certain teams. Obviously, we won't run like a lot of bubbles versus like a press team, like a cover four team, or something like that. So it, it all depends. I came out of the uh, spring game and love offense, but I thought the defense kind of edged you guys for the day. But I was most impressed with the cornerback play. How, as a quarterback, were you like, damn, dude, like, I'm not seeing a lot of separation here. Like, it seemed like they were on you guys, like, you know, pretty tight coverage all day. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with you that the defense <laughs> won the day, but. Well, I know the scoreboard <laughs> says you guys won by, like, yeah, three, but, look, but look, you know. Every time the, I was in with the ones, the ones, mm-hmm. we scored six out of seven, of the, five out of six in the five. <laughs> I don't think that. <laughs> I'm just saying, my scoreboard had the defense come out a little bit in front. I don't know. I don't think so. No. <laughs> I didn't see it that way. I saw the run game pick up. I saw a, a bunch of game. plays over there. Mm-hmm. I saw the defensive coverage guys. I, I did think that there were some good coverage moments. They had some highlights, but I, I do agree with well, Tyler. Yeah, well, yeah, no, no, for sure. Like, the defense definitely got better, but when you run the same plans for four weeks and you're still driving on the defense, yeah. you remember? It, it was a lot of repeat plays. I yeah, know yeah, in no, spring game sure. you try to keep it vanilla. Try to, mm-hmm. I, you I, don't I, show I, too I much. I think I tweaked them a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Good, I mean, good. A bit. Tyler is looking at me like you son of a bitch what Scoop, are you Scoop told about? us to take the shot because he's all he's all butthurt right? about the golfing thing yeah hey, so I heard a little rumor you actually outdrive ready, Novak I'm around him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't hit it, I don't hit it straight every time he does <laughs> right right okay but See, he's humble. No, that's yeah. not, no, it's like, damn, Tyler's out driving the pro. <laughs> no, that guy's a stick. That's ridiculous. Nice. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, well, listen, we're going to let you guys get back. We just want to touch base real quick, find out how you uh, guys felt the spring game one. And obviously the offense won. Yeah. I take that. Yeah, All right, no, my, my, sure. my, my, my bad. Sure. I'm, I apologize. He wins, um, he loses. He, well. he, he lost. He lost. Well. He yeah. lost. Okay, yeah. I know you guys were yeah. watching the game. So that's yeah. going on. So you're probably listening to this tomorrow. You probably watched it tonight. Uh, the Heat lost. How they lost bad. He's too. a Sixers like fan. Oh, points. you're a Sixers fan? I am. Oh, what? So how? Wait, how does that happen? <laughs> Connecticut? My dad's from the Philly area. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Oh, then that's fine. All right. We'll, we'll let that happen. I okay. Heat five, but yeah. right? Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. <laughs> so you were rooting <laughs> against the Heat? Yeah, of course. For sure. <laughs> wow. All right. What other teams do you root? Like, what other South Florida teams do you root against? What, what's your NFL team? I mean, I like the Eagles, but like... It doesn't feel Whatever like team drafts you. Are you a you. Flyers fan? <laughs> They're not good, I so that's why. I like the Phillies and Sixers. Oh, so, you know, it's, right. it's, it's Philly-based, and you're like South Florida. like Well, all heat. Miami teams are the best, though. So. There you go. All exactly. Right. There you go. All 100%. Right. So, so Heat, Fins, Panthers. Yeah. yeah. Marlins, well, they, well, listen, the Panthers have an opening for an NIL deal because the Eric left, so yeah. someone's got to jump on that. That should be UX. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a Flyers fan. The X Burger. <laughs> yeah, the X Burger. Right. The King Dog. Oh, the X Burger would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, listen, go have fun. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Thank you very you much guys. for stopping really by, man. We appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear yourself? Yeah. So you, you already hear his voice, OBB <laughs> fam and fans. But we have Neo next to us, but in like person, in person. This is an honor. I, for I didn't us. even see him get into the chair. <laughs> he glitched in. You see he that? Glitched in. <laughs> we're sitting so, here all of a sudden. Tays next to us. See, you know, we're right here too, and we're we're gonna say it now. We're, we're trying to set up a watch party so Neo can actually watch his namesake, so he can see how special Neo was in the movies because <laughs> you were doing it like crazy. Monte, talk to us, man. How are you doing? 
I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing phenomenal, man. So great event. I mean, obviously, Life Wallet. Uh, we're here. They're on stage. They're they're on the small stage. We're on the big stage right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, obviously, tell us your thoughts about this event and everything and all the buzz that's surrounding Miami right now. Um, this is actually my first event, and it's actually crazy. It's in the middle of downtown, trains going through, lights everywhere, skyscrapers. It's nothing like I've ever seen before, so. You can't get this in Gainesville or Tallahassee, nah, right? Nah, <laughs> no, 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 no. What are you talking about? They got buses. <laughs> they got little buses that go through town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So, uh, Scoop, you weren't on uh, the last segment, but we had Tyler Van Dyke and X, and he, he almost caused, caused a riot, and I, and I obviously want to bother it Because he basically I, said— I told them that the defense won the spring game, and they were not happy with me. <laughs> oh, they were not happy. I know. Thank yeah, you. Right. Thank you. Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't think it was controversial. <laughs> we look good, right? Right. Yeah, you guys look phenomenal. You guys won. He goes, Scoreboard might not have said it, but you guys won. <laughs> he said he said six out of the seven times I ran with the ones we scored. <laughs> but he had to bring up stats. He Who always going to say, he's, well, he's keeping track. <laughs> Clearly he's keeping track because I think, I think that what he's mad about is that maybe the impression that we got might be the impression that a lot of other people had as well, yep. which was that the, the defense, defense won, was, won that, that game. It was steadfast and shut them down. Maybe he's mad about that. Tyler seems a little upset about it, to be honest with you. That's good. That's a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> we got to piss off Tyler. To the fly, fly. That, that's yeah. right. And, yeah. that, and honestly, what r- really was refreshing for us was the fact that <laughs> awesome, they got the University of Miami <laughs> band playing in the I love it. Nice um, jacket. <laughs> But was the secondary? You, you guys were just blankets, man. You guys were blankets on those boys. They, they, whatever their jacket size was, you provided the jacket. You were their jackets. I mean, I thought Ivy was did phenomenal in coverage. Uh, you did phenomenal. I saw you head hunting, like, dude. I don't know if you notice this, like, because I like, I like to do film for fun, right? Yeah. So I do it, and I just show up for the fans. It's always been the fans for the fans. And I always love your clips. You want to know why? Because everybody moves at a certain speed, and all of a sudden, somebody just flies across the screen like they're <laughs> dubbed wrong. Like, it's like something's wrong with the film. And it's it's always like the new high school kids, right? Yes, they yes. speed up the film a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when they run by, that's they right. speed it up. So, like, that's you. Like, all of a sudden, you just came down to the line of scrimmage. You closed on, like, a, a, a drag across the field. And I'm like, dude. Blankets, blankets, just <laughs> running so fast. <laughs> so we had Gil on, and we finally got the, you know, his where he would like to be. Gilberto, yeah, Gilberto. Gilberto. He's a, you, you two. I tell you, you two and your smiles. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask you the same question. Like all he did was smile on the show. He gonna, does that all the time. I'm gonna ask you the same question. I said, hey, third down, where you want to be? You want to be in a box? Or you want to be in coverage? Third down, you want to be in the box? Or you want to be in coverage? I know what his answer is. I. I don't know. I probably want to be in. I would say coverage because maybe it's like maybe when they're going for the shots, I want to get a pick. Right there, you go. A, so the yeah. difference there, the mentality is Tay wants picks. Yeah, and yeah. Gil wants to thump your ass. <laughs> yeah. Right, like he wants, he wants to take your sack. head off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a whole a it's a whole different mentality with that. Yeah. Right. Now, now, not to say that you don't want to hit. I was or like to say hit. that because I, I, I know, I know. We yeah. had this conversation about about Thad, and you said I don't care how big he is, that dude needs to be hit. Yeah. Exactly, but I don't want to be on this highlight either. So you know, you gotta <laughs> just get lower. Yeah, you just gotta get lower. And finesse. You gotta finesse with him. I did. See, I did see one. I had one of our uh, a photographer got some photos for us in the spring game, and there was one where Thad had cut back inside, and you were. Um, I was laying down, but I thought it was strategic so you could get out of the way and trip him up. <laughs> nah, that, that was my thought. I think I was just running too fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Go back to my down. prior That's point. Right. Go back to my prior Wearing point. Sandals. He runs so fast. Sometimes yeah. he, just, he just blurred right by it sometimes. Yeah, he just, yeah. I was he just, just running too fast. fast. You know, talk to us about this event because NIL's got this, like, really, you know, across the country, a lot of people are, like, soured by it. You know, yeah, they, I like, see. I see. Yeah, you see it, right? Yeah, I see. But, like, just for the fans listening, how cool is this event? I mean, this is this is an NIL thing. It's attached to Life Wallet. Right. It's giving you guys life skills, some business skills. You're making connections. Right. You're doing like talk to us about it from your perspective. How how has NIL Life Wallet changed you? So this is actually my first event, but feeding off what you just said, like communicating and being out here with new faces and shaking hands, I think 
for the people out, they should want that for us, you know? Like, they already said they wanted us to get paid, so you should want us to be able to get out, meet new people, communicate, um, see new faces, you know? Like, learn new things. You should want that. I don't think you should... I don't think you should look at this stuff as a negative thing. I, I don't... I just don't agree with that. It's making us better young men, better young women, and uh, it's actually a great thing to have going on, and I believe everyone should do it, and if they're not, then find something similar, you know? Like, it's, 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 it's helping us in a positive way, so I don't see how you can look at it as a, as negative. I don't, I don't understand that. No, I think, and I think that not everybody, I would say not everybody is doing it like this, right? So not right, everyone right. has somebody at the helm directing. He's, he's on the stage currently, uh, on the small stage over there. Um, <laughs> and he, he's the one who's, who's producing this show, essentially, by, by giving the, the young men, the young ladies, the opportunity to learn the life lessons, right. to, to connect, right, to uh, network, right? Because it's all about that, that's football's only for so long. Even if you make the NFL, it's still only for so long. We had Drew on with us, now Drew Rosenhaus on with us about an hour ago, and we were talking about that. It's it's only for so long. And being able to learn the life lessons, be able to communicate better, uh, right. potentially. Uh, understand uh, the proper dialogue between individuals and communicating. It's all about connections, all about leverage. It's all about who you know to an extent, not not that way, but really creating the relationships. Uh, it takes you a long you being, way. It, it absolutely does. It takes you everywhere. Yeah. Right. Those connections take you everywhere. So the ability for you to come out and meet any of these people, you don't know. You meet one person out here that could change your life. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I met him. <laughs> <laughs> See how good it is now? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it, it, but it, he, he absolutely says it is, and it's true. It, it's it's so refreshing to see, you know, I mean, it's not just from the, okay, because we're fans, and we're fans of the football team. We're fans of you as people. Right. And, you know, and this right. is something that advances you as a person, you know, I and I this, just think more people need to see this side of the NIL. Right. I believe this goes further. Go ahead. No, I believe this. Um, this is more important than football in my eyes because, like, like you just said, like we have a life after football. You, mm-hmm. you need to know people. You need to know, need to know little things to help you get further in life and, and commit to what you're gonna do with your life after ball. So, I just think it's really important. I think being able to come out here and meet new people and, and do things like this is is, is huge. So. And just a tag team, too, because this was like we're, we're piggybacking off of Drew Rosenhaus, who we talked to before. But he did say, no, he, we're all big fans of the NIL. We believe, especially how hard you guys work. I don't think people understand it. I was a college athlete once, and the rigors are going to, like, study hall, playing, going out of town, conference games, non-conference games, you know. And then, yes, you're trying to keep your grades up, right? To be able to be compensated for that, because in terms of hours, you know, people put in hours, they get paid. Right. There's no doubt you guys have always put in the hours as an athlete as that. But he did bring up something. I want to get your take on it. And I know you said you like the transfer portal because, you know, if you're good, you stay. And if you got your team gets better. But do you think at a certain point that they should probably, like, limit the transfer, like, when you should? Maybe it's too crazy right now? Um, I don't really have a take on that. Uh, I believe it should be a deadline. I'm not sure if it is or not. Okay. I, be- I believe it should be a deadline. But some guys, some guys really need, some guys really need to transfer. You know, like some guys need to get closer to family. Gotcha. Some guys are in a bad position at at, at their school. Maybe they, maybe not agreeing with the coaches, not seeing eye to eye with the coaches. Um, I think it's a good thing, but. I do believe it needs to be like some limitations on it. Yeah, because it's it, one of the guys like listen, Pitt. He's he's making rounds. He was the Blitnikoff Award winner, right? And part of me, like Avante, I feel bad for Pitt because that's the guy they were counting on, right? Yeah. And at the last second, and that didn't give the coach the opportunity to maybe like go look for somebody who wants a new fresh opportunity. I, I want screw him. Pitt. Yeah, screw them. Oh boy. No, 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 no. But like part so, but I agree with Avante, like having that deadline, but then like some limitations where hey man, that they need to have a little open window so they can go ahead and get somebody that Avante could clamp down. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but Litner right You gotta matter. hit him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and see and see what you said about like the coach being able to get another receiver. 
the coach can leave you and then you can't go to another school. So True. I don't I don't I don't really care for that because okay. the coaches don't care. So it's like and I that part of it's it. true, and that's yeah. coming straight from a player. Like these, yeah. the, they get Mario can leave tomorrow to go to the NFL. Yeah, he, he can be. I mean, he's not, but he's he can exactly, be gone. exactly. But we're like, not saying that he's not <laughs> going to. This is right. his dream job. You know, obviously that's not going to happen. Yeah. But like you know, you've seen coaches before, like you know that Jimbo Fisher. You know, he's going to be here for life, and then he left to go to just, Texas A&M. Just up and leave. Yeah. Well, I mean, smart move. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even can't fix blame the, the guy. <laughs> I mean, they can't even fix that. Uh, it's ridiculous. Now I want to talk about something really, really serious is very important you get your haircut today did i yeah i got it cut looks early. like it looks I good it cut, i get it cut every friday i try look, to looks good right no, that's, a tight, that's a tight it is, it looks good yeah. you got cut yesterday very nice yeah <laughs> no today today's friday yeah you yeah. make him See? jealous every time he looks at you. i know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right so before we get avante out of here so he can enjoy the festivities thank you so much i can't wait for the season Let's, I'm going to do it on the fly. Oh, I have, boy. I have confidence go. in myself. I, I have confidence in you, too. Red pill, blue pill. Okay. Okay? <laughs> As a toy. Here we go. As a toy. Oh do you want a one of these luxurious fast racing boats or a helicopter? I had a helicopter toy, and I wrecked it. I could not figure no, out. No, I'm talking about a real one. one. Like a oh, real, real, boat real toy. Or a real helicopter. Like the oh. big boy toys. Yeah, I definitely get a boat. I get a boat. <laughs> yeah, I get a boat. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Oh, wait, before I go on to the next question, what kind of boat? I have no clue. <laughs> <A> cigarette. <laughs> but that's cigarette, cigarette boat. Yeah, you want a yacht. Cigarette. You want a yacht. You want to do so well that you're going to go ahead and get a yacht. Okay, because I'm staring at an icy machine. An icy. Are we going strawberry icy or lime icy? Red strawberry. Beer. Strawberry icy? Yeah. All right. Regular uh, cubed ice or nugget ice? So, this is a there's no cubed ice in a slushy. <laughs> I'm just talking the difference between cubed ice and nugget ice. See, he's got this thing nugget for ice, nugget, nugget ice, ice like Chick-fil-A I ice. Oh, I love Chick-fil-A. Oh, see, 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 see there's the answer. You gotta just say it better. Well, I had to, I had to, uh, better. apparently I didn't describe it. <laughs> yeah, well I was enough. confused. All right. So, <laughs> hey, we're going to play off that. Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich or another chick or chicken sandwich. You can pick what other chicken. That's your, I'm giving you an open-ended blue. Red is chicken. Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. Blue is whatever other chicken sandwich that you think is better. Uh, uh, probably another. Oh, yeah. I, I don't really like Chick Fil A chicken. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I grew out of those. <laughs> he grew out of them just like he grew out of Dre and mm-hmm. Eminem. And yeah. <laughs> Still likes Mary though. Yeah. Right. Mary J. Blige. Yeah. She good. All right. We got another one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with another one. All right. What do you think is a bigger thrill? Well, let me ask you. You ever like jump out of a plane before? I plan on doing that. There you plan go. On it. There you go. It's crazy. Ooh, I was so just it's watching some to, videos. About I was gonna say jumping out of a plane. What do you think is a bigger thrill jumping out of a plane or running out of the smoke on Saturdays running out of smoke oh yeah running out of smoke now right. now it's now a, I to a whole different person like once we touch the field and it's game time like I'm locked that, in. you know what it it's came different. from like, that's fine but I'm gonna I'm gonna spin different. that I'm gonna spin that for <laughs> him I, I want to add something to it too we had somebody on old school guy played here all American named Kevin Patrick probably gave one of the greatest quotes on our show ever he's like when I walked out of the smoke, I was coming out of one world and going into another world, and we own that world. And yeah. that's what coming out of a guy that did it years and years ago. And I was yeah. like, man, that gives me goose. I was like, I never would experience that. You know, they're a childhood team. I played for a different college. But I was like, man, that would be so cool to do. Yeah. yeah. I'm you, a caveat. You, can, you yeah. can smell the grass. Like, that's the, that's the best part. Like, you can smell the grass. Like it's go time. The fans cheering. Like it's hot. It's humid. It's humid. Like it's gold. Like guys, you is a podcast. You can't see his face. <laughs> he was like smelling the grass. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He is remember. always smiling. He gets me to smile. He got mad, like, like angry. He was talking about I could smell the grass. Yeah, like, he was legit yeah. pissed he, off. Like right there. he has that switch. Yeah, that was awesome. That Go was. Ahead. I noticed that. Too. I'm like, man, I almost wanted to He's switch like, chairs. I smell the grass. I want to scoot over He's a little bit. Tackle your ass. I know. I'm like, holy hell, we're in trouble. I'm more like Thad Franklin, so I'm bigger. We're at Thad's side. I'm Rooster. I'm fine. (laughs) You can't catch my ass. I was going to say, I appreciate that. You ain't never jumped out of a plane, though. Yeah, I plan on doing this. It's, it's awesome. It's brilliant. Yep. When I have some time, I, don't, I, I have zero time. Well, it don't, it don't, it doesn't take very long. <laughs> it, you know, it really does. And I tell you, the first time I swear, the first time I jumped out one, I swore to God I was gonna go get certified, and I was gonna, I planned the whole thing out. It was that great. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went again, and I was like, man, maybe not. Then we I went have third one. time, and I was like, I'm good. Yeah. I went three times, and 
He likes it. Yeah, oh, dude. It's, oh, it's awesome. stupid. It's awesome. Yep. Yeah. You got to do it. We have one in my question. Town, actually. No, I I, right. I think was trying to end on seven, but that's that's what I got. I tried to give it to you. I always try to give you seven questions in honor of your daughter. How's she doing, by the way? She's doing great. She's doing great. She's talking. Uh huh. She's full of energy, a ball of energy, actually. Any cute things she says, it's crazy what they say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She says some crazy. I don't want to say it on here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say it on here. She says something crazy a few nice. days ago. And now you probably tell, like, where'd you learn that, little lady? I was uh-huh. shocked. I was shocked. <laughs> There's sponges. You never know. They don't leave the house. You're like, wait a minute. There's sponges. Right. What are you watching? Right. They hear everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, Tay. Cool, cool. Thank you, bro. Thank you, man. Well, Always we're going to let you go because they have some real cool 80s dance music. They I'm do. sure all you young guys would love He's never heard this the, before. No, I I have. Yeah. <laughs> Not like some break dancing music. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Get a cardboard yeah. box. They used to put we'll cardboard on the floor. Electric in. Boogaloo. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> <So> about Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Holy hell. Oh, awesome. All right, bro. Appreciate y'all, man. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you, Tay. Thank you, Tay. If you want to make money, I, I don't I don't know how you don't throw money at beating the bookie and buy his packages. The dude now is dropping freebie Korean baseball winners at like one o'clock in the morning. I have yet <laughs> I've yet to play any because I never see them. Because <laughs> yes. I'm already asleep. The guy never sleeps. No. I swear he never sleeps because he's I wake up, you know, I get up about six o'clock. I wake up and the damn tweet's out from, you know, 1.30. And I'm like, really? And then the game's over, obviously, by 6. He, he's got the NHL. He's got the uh, uh, what, the playoffs now. Panthers yes. in the playoffs, yes. right? Panthers won last night. Mm-hmm. Panthers go! Go! go. And yeah, so, yeah, it's all it's all good, man. It's He wins you money. Beatinthebookie.com, at Beatinthebookie, Twitter. What is, it's like a conglomerate. Look There's a lot. Guys, I know. Huh? My God. After you get those picks from Betting the Bookie, go to our crew at DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Now, use promo code TPPN, bet $5 on any, any NBA team to win their game and go get $150 in free bets if they do. That's promo code TPPN, only a DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And take that money and go over to Canesware. Yeah. Canesware, the fastest shipping in the West. Anyway. All orders over $99 are free and clear in terms of shipping costs. They got Panther stuff. They got Heat stuff. They got TV Dime stuff. They got yep. XR7 stuff, too. I've seen it. These boys have been over to Canesware. Brett, Kenny, and the boys, they will hook you up. Canesware. And lastly, as you know from last week, we have welcomed on a new partner to the Orange Bowl boys, and that is the crew at Manscaped. And right now, for the remainder of the month, you can get 20% off and free shipping with promo code OBB at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code OBB. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And check out uh, that new... uh, Your balls? Well, thank you. Yeah, your balls are going to be all about it. Yeah. You know what's the greatest thing about this live show right now? What? Is that you can't play the intro for five questions on me right now. Bet your ass I can't. Oh, oh, no. Uh, you have it on oh, the roads, oh. too. He's got to find it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he does. <laughs> oh, my go. God, he does. He's of course got I do. It. Oh. All right, boys and girls, wrapping things up with five questions. As always, question number one. I didn't look at these. If you, you know what the best part about it is? What? You don't have Hillary stats in front of you. I have them memorized. Oh, you do? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes, I do. Okay. Listen, she's so legendary. Yeah, I know. So I know. historical. She's got a lot of stuff. I mean, come on. How do so, you not have that stuff planted in your brain? That's true. Uh, question number one. <laughs> if you could meet any fictional character, who would it be? Fictional, not real. I'm meeting Obi Wan Kenobi. I knew he was going to say a Star Wars yes, person. Of course, like, yeah, you can't meet it. Yeah. I mean, Yoda would be cool to meet too, but he yeah. keeps talking like backwards. I mean, like you're the you've well, been on you you're like over nine thousand years old, and you still have to learn talk to Grogu. Yeah, but no, but Grogu's not really talking these days. He's grunting. Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> final answer. That series comes out May 24th, I think, or May 26th. Looking forward to it. The Inquisitors are going to get diced. 
Love it. I have no idea what he was talking about. The Inquisitors. I, I do. Don't know, I don't know no what's going idea. on. Um, F- fictional character? Fictional character. Yeah, you could meet? Uh, I, I would say, you know, in, in uh, parlaying off of our recent guest, mm-hmm. I'd like to meet Neo. Oh. Okay. Whoa. Trinity. But then that means the Matrix is real. Right. Okay. That'd be cool, though. That would be. Yeah, no, that would be good. Uh, I was going to go with uh, Iron Man. Ooh, Robert Downey Jr. I saw his boat last night. Yes. The Iron Man. The Iron Man was right next to us. The Wild Duck. It was was. next to the Wild Duck. Yeah, yeah. In between. All right, question number two. Dos Minutos. What do you think is the most toxic community or fan base? I'm going to go, I mean, aside from the obvious, I'm going to say the Philadelphia Eagles. Wow. Okay. Where's Tyler? (laughs) He's not going to be happy with me about that. No, I want to go with the obvious. I just don't know which one's worse, Florida or Florida State. Right, right. It's tough. That's a tough debate. But I kind of want to give another curveball answer to this and say the collective that is SEC conference friends. Like you are a fan of a conference. You guys are weird. SEC conference fans, my final answer. You know what? I don't find the Gator or Seminole fan base, at least right now, overly toxic. There is, though, a Florida fan base that I do feel is toxic right now. Oh, that is UCF. That's a good one. I think UCF's fan base right now is absolutely toxic. Delusional. Damn that. Yes. Delusional. All these things. All right. What food looks utterly disgusting but tastes incredible? Uh, oysters. Oh, there you go. Do you put uh, cocktail sauce on them or anything on them? Vinegar. Vinegar. Vin- it's a vinegar sauce. I eat West Coast oysters. Oh. And it's a vinegar sauce. Never had that. Bro? So much better than I like the- oysters. They do look gross. They, they do. Delicious. Oh, they look like little brains but, or snops. But uh, my answer, because I'm deep in the uh, heart of South Florida, <laughs> flan. Oh, it looks like flan's the best okay. dessert ever. Yeah. It looks like flan's phlegm. Damn good. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like phlegm, but it tastes damn good. Best dessert on, on earth. Flan. I am going to go with guacamole. Ooh, that's a good one. Looks like vomit. Yeah, it does. But it tastes like really baby good. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, Deadpool. Looks like your face threw up an avocado. <laughs> 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 All right, question number four. What is a good thing to do when your male friend, who never before, starts crying? Ooh. (laughs) This is going to get awkward. Starts crying. And let's just say the crying can't be because somebody close to them died. Because that's a whole, like... Like a relationship breakup or like like you're watching a movie? Yeah, sure, any of those. I, I think the initial instinct for me is going to be, bro, you all right? I think that's all of our instinct. Like, you just look at him, you're like, I'm not used to seeing this dude crying. He's crying. I'm like, bro, you all right? Uh, but then I'm going to literally take out my phone and look at funny tic- TikToks of cats. I got to lighten the mood. I'm going to look at my friend and uh, just be like, you need to stop that now. <laughs> Please. Like, you need to stop that now. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, like, your parents died or your wife well, died. Well, you said like, that you couldn't know. be the right, thing. Exactly, so, exactly. so because if this is because your team lost or whatever. Like, because you gotta... we know that that's not the case, mm-hmm. then I would just mock them to death. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe you walk up to him and yeah. what's wrong? You're We're such good crying. people. Can, can you see how we <laughs> happen? Can you see how we handle life. I'm sending TikTok videos of cats. Does the saying, get over it, and Scoop's making fun of them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. I don't see the problem with any of that. Alright. Next one. Last question. What is the worst movie sequel? Ooh. There's been some bad sequels. Yeah. I'm going to say... I'm going to pick one that comes out in a couple of weeks. Top Gun 2. Knock it off. Knock it off. Knock it off. (laughs) You can't pick a movie. No, you can't do it. You can't do it. I read them around tomatoes. It's awful. That means it's going to be good. Because that's the critic score, right? What's the fan score? (laughs) That's the one you got to pay attention to. Uh, For me, this is going to be easy. Along the lines of Star Wars. uh, Because it was a sequel of the new prequels. Or after series, whatever you want to call those abominations. But, uh... The Last Jedi. Horrible. All right. Horrible. Horrible. Scoop? 
the first uh, oh, well, the, <laughs> the first the, the, the first female to be nominated by a major party to run for president that was Hillary Clinton Hillary Rodham Clinton. also yes, obviously a secretary of state she a, came from Arkansas that's yes, where it, she met Bill but do you know she was a senator from the state of New York I know yeah New nope. York, the Empire State, which a lot of people think New York City is the capital of New York, but it's not. It isn't. Do you know it's what it is? Albany. Correct, sir. I have a grandmother Correct, who sir. worked. Mm-hmm. You also know that Hillary gave birth to an exceptional young daughter. Her name is Chelsea. <laughs> he just muted me. He muted the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting up and he's walking away. I've got nothing. I don't have an answer. You have to have an answer. What is the worst movie sequel? Come on. I'll tell you one right now. So when I was in high school, I thoroughly loved, laughed my ass off for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I know it was stupid, but that sequel was fucking... Well, I never saw the sequel. Oh. I never thought they had a sequel. Yeah, That's they had how a bad sequel. that was. Bill and Ted's 2. Did you... Police Academy. Oh, the, okay, there you go. Sure. Police the Academy there you go. 100%. Uh, I'll go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was that with the one Bob with Bobcat? <laughs> that was the same. <laughs> <laughs> Our art and blue fart. I blew the whole damn thing apart. Let's talk some poetry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys and girls. I think that does it for a podcast episode. Oh my On this goodness. note, I think we're going to get out of here. Questions. All right, so uh, once again, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the musical accompaniment behind us all evening long. Um, and uh, thanks to John Ruiz and Life Wallet and Alex Ruiz and Deanna Diaz and everybody for having us come on down here. Uh, as always, go Canes! Are we going to name the show? Oh, shit. <laughs> but we know it. Oh, yeah. Didn't we come up with a name earlier? Subliminally. 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 That one. That's it. That's it. That, I'll spell it that Figure way. out how to spell it. Yeah. Subliminally. <laughs> Subliminally. As always, go Canes! Go! Bang! That's another episode in the books. The Orange Ball Boys are brought to you by Edmorse Automotive Group. Visit edmorse.com.